Good morning. New rooster. Mama, is he supposed to be out? Did they let you out? What? All right, sorry for all that ruckus at the very beginning there. I'm Nick with uh, Tierra Permaculture. I'm here at Hacienda Rosa up in Luquillo, Puerto Rico today to basically show you a couple of little chicken systems they have here, uh, but also going to be working up here. So today's post will likely go out in the afternoon, not the morning, and you won't know that because when I get this out, you'll be watching it. So it doesn't really make much sense for me to tell you, but I'm telling you anyway. So I'm showing you here another one of the chicken systems that they uh, they have. I had previously featured the Chickshaw Mini-Me, uh, inspired by Justin Rhodes, and I will show you that in the same video as well. But I wanted to show you our more permanent chicken coop system here and uh, our plans to expand it to make it a little bit more usable and uh, chicken friendly. So let's take a look at that now. Let's first, uh, hey mama. This mama's going blind. She has something wrong with her eye. So she's going blind. It's okay, mama. It's okay. It's okay. Poor mama's going blind in her eye here. It's kind of getting cloudy. I don't know if you guys can see that. She's not feeling well, so I'm just gonna pick her up and bring her up here before I continue this. Look at all those eggs down here. Ooh. Mama's not too happy with me. Are you broody? No, you're not broody. You're just wanting to lay an egg in peace. All right, now to the actual action here. So we're here on this little slope here. We're on a fairly decent slope. Um, it's not intense, it's not super intense, but we get a lot of water flow down this down this slope when it's actually uh, raining and we have a lot of rain. So uh, we do need to keep in mind that we wanna make sure we're keeping stability on the slope while we're doing this and not letting it kind of completely get bare, bare soil, which it was at some point before we re-tinkered re the system a little bit. So first thing I wanna show you guys is this little mini chicken coop. I think this is the first one they had on their site. This is long before I was here. And this one, I think they built or they bought, and it's just a basic little coop. Um, we use it now actually for raising chicks. Uh, it just has you know a small little inside area where we can close it up. And you can, there's a little, what would be the nest box area in here. So super simple, super, uh, super basic, but it works as a coop for a couple of birds for sure. And then for chicks, it's perfect because it's uh, it's small enough where that it's not too much of an area to manage with chicks because if anyone's raised chicks before, you know they can be very messy and it's not always fun to be picking up after them all the time. So having a coop that's not too big or a coop area that's not too big, if you're not going to have them on grass, it's, it's a benefit because then it's easier to manage that kind of gross, the gross cleanup that goes along with the chicks who like to uh, fertilize quite a bit. So this area here, was part of the original kind of chicken coop area and that one up there was actually turned about 90 degrees this way so that big opening was facing this way and it was a little bit closer to uh, this coop right here so what we did to kind of alter it a little bit is we actually moved this uphill a little bit this whole coop thing it was it was somewhat of a project but we moved this whole coop thing uphill and uh, create a small little level terrace in here. Let's see if I can get you from being too dark in there. We just create a small little terrace in here that runs water that way and out. And at the base here, we have this kind of angle part of the terrace where we let that fill up with organic material. And below that, this piece right here, this piece of uh, sheet metal it's actually just nailed on by one little nail down there and one on the other side so we can actually pull that out and then rake down all that organic material so we can use that in a compost pile so it's it's kind of setting up the, st the stages to actually use this as a full-time compost production area 
we actually use these old screens to create a little mini temporary fence right next to this little ch this little chick coop as we're using it to have a little area for the chicks to explore while they're uh, when we actually do let them out and we would actually just use those same screens straight across on that path there and then they have a nice little small enclosure so they can actually get some green and move a little bit more um, we definitely need to improve this because this area right where I'm standing is probably gets the most amount of flow of water on this site. So right down here, this, this grassy area, you can see it's nice and uh, it's well, well grown now, but if the chickens are on this too long in the rainy season, all this, uh, all this green material will be gone really, really quickly. So this area, we basically used a deep, deep bedding system here right outside their coop. And we actually had them penned up just in this little area to start with. So we had a bunch of deep bedding that we added here to kind of prevent it from getting stinky and having any problems with, uh, with disease or anything like that. But this works great as a little chick system, and, but that's about it at this point. We were thinking about actually getting rid of this and using this whole area right here as a uh, kind of compost processing area but then realize that when we do, currently they don't like to keep a rooster. We do have three roosters currently on the site because the last batch of chickens they picked up from the local chicken supplier actually ended up with three roosters. So, you know, that's life. Now we have three roosters. So if we don't end up keeping the roosters, they will be harvested humanely or they'll be given away to someone who wants some roosters. So their actual pen in here, this is kind of their more temporary coop area or a more temporary pen for these main mamas up here. And this is where we'll keep them anytime we're not using the hens for jobs around the property, prepping soil for us, using that portable chick shaw, chicken coop that we use um, with the other chicks. If, they're, if we're not using the chickens for any major tasks, they come back here. And the goal with this area is actually to have three or four pastures that we can rotate them through with this home coop being the center, kind of like the central area where we keep them so the goal will end up being having this area kind of cut off so we can have them move up the hill and right above here here's the fence line right here right above this fence line is an area where we did have them running through but it's a little steep right here and we wanted to keep it a little protected so we actually shut them out of there but usually right up here we can open up this little gate area right here this part of the uh, chicken wire actually is just attached there and it can they can basically walk straight up here and then up there a little further there's a couple big kind of grassy areas that we're going to try to turn into a chicken pasture so i'll take you guys up there right now just so you can kind of see what i'm talking about before i leave this area i just want to point out one or two things so right here we have a path and that's mainly so we can access we can walk back and forth in here without disturbing the soil too much etc um, but it also acts as a diversion drain a very slight diversion drain so during heavy rain events uh, this is a big old valley up here so the the valley comes down the major water flows come down here flow down past that tree and then down into the bananas below there um, basically straight down there and that's right where I was in that little baby chicken coop area down here with the screens that's right down here so all this major water flow where all these kind of sedges are growing on the ground here these sedges this one over here a couple over there um, this whole area gets really really inundated in that like super rainy times anytime we're getting like a lot of rain for you know a week or two which happens occasionally here so what I did was actually create this pathway that's doubling as a kind of uh, slightly off contour diversion drain. And really it's kind of, it's based on key line. So key line basically takes water from the valley, from the lowest part of the, of the uh, landscape to the ridge so that it can essentially spread out that water instead of rushing down the valley, it pacifies it, slows it down, allows it to soak in if there's time and then it moves it off to the side towards a ridge and at the ridge line it's a little bit more stable and uh, things can flow a little bit more easily so that path actually comes out 
So we were just on the other side of this little surfboard. So most of the family here are surfers. So there's a lot of old surfboards that are used for various things throughout the property, if you're wondering. Um, but that path here comes down below this surfboard. And I'm currently walking in the little drainage area. And spills over here, right near this tree and above that tree right here. So the water comes underneath the surfboard this way. You can see where I kind of walked that little depression there. And then it spills right there, straight down. And this is the ridge. So we're basically just taking a little bit of pressure off of the valley drainage system over here and moving along this pathway over to the ridge here so that we just gain a little bit of stability over there because if we are having chickens in here in this permanent coop area, uh, likely it'll be around a hurricane where we've just had a lot of uh, a lot of rainfall, like huge amounts of rainfall, two, three feet of rainfall, um, in you know a couple of days. So that any time that we get that kind of rain, it's it's going to end up causing damage at somewhere. That's just the reality of living in the tropics, right? So uh, this system is basically just meant to not to stop the flow because the flow is going to happen no matter what. It's just meant to slow down that heavy, heavy flow when it does reach there and then move it away from the main side it drains. Now, it ends up going to the exact same place. So I'm not changing that flow of water. So by spilling here, it moves downhill and it goes down through those bananas down there. I don't know if you can see the bananas from here, but there's some more bananas down there and it goes this way and then actually meets up where the other water would have flowed down that tree line right down here it comes down and over there and this drainage comes down and over here so we actually end up going into the exact same watershed all we're doing is taking a little bit of pressure off of the system right there where i know we're going to be actively using that area for the chickens so it's basically a, guaranteeing a little bit it's not guaranteeing it's helping guarantee a, a little bit of stability and you know nothing's nothing's uh permanent so we'll we'll kind of see how it works uh, once we get this see how the rainy seasons come and if we get any major major rain events and major storms this year we'll see but so far when we've had storms that have dumped you an inch or two this system has worked really well so i'm pretty happy with it and it's just a simple like three foot wide pathway that's slightly in sloped so it's instead of being a terrace path that goes like this it's actually just slightly in sloped and then this way on the on the uh slope it's sloped this way only about one percent so it barely moves if you look at the water when it's actually flowing it's just it's like a slight movement down so it's barely anything at all so walking up now to the upper area where we're trying to add think about adding a pasture and you can see we actually started already so this little area it's fenced in very makeshiftly with literally just like sticks and stakes I could find in the forest here. But this area was just a bunch of overgrowth and we do want to protect it because there are major, those major rain events I keep talking about. Again, I keep stressing those over and over again here because we are in the tropics and we can get major rain events very quickly without much warning, you know? So we need to be prepared for those, but at the same time, we want to be able to use the property for you know the benefit of the people here. So we got to make sure we just find that balance between protecting the actual landscape here, but also being able to use the landscape um, in certain ways. And since this area is one of the few places on this side of the property that isn't completely forested and could potentially be used as a pasture, we're trying to use it as that pasture. The goal here is to create three or four little paddock systems where we can basically let them let the chickens come up from their original coop area, which I'll show you. So right down here, that's where the chickens are. After they live normally, the coop's right over there. So that's that little gate I was talking about right here. So when we have it we have a fence system that we can temporarily set up that comes up here and you can see there's a post here that's just kind of left over from when i did that and then we have you can already see there's actually fencing along this side the fencing comes up here so this acts as a little path that i'm walking on right here nice and level across contour 
And then up here is where we'll have this pasture. So you can see these heliconias that grow here like crazy. They, they are very easy to take over. I mean, they're beautiful flowers, right? Beautiful, but um, the chickens don't eat them, at least what, in what I've kind of experienced so far. So we're kind of not, we're trying to select against them just in the pasture area. We are letting them grow naturally here um, as kind of a buffer right before that chicken coop area. So we're actually gonna keep this little bit of a buffer that's right behind me because it's gonna help us protect against those uh, rain events and have like a nice little uh, green growth area that is just above where the chicken coop is right down there. So this area is just gonna help. I mean, it's a little bit of a windbreak because east, east is this way, east southeast is kind of this way. So we get a lot of our major winds coming from this way. So as the wind kicks up and over that ridge and comes down here, it's going to blow and then this is actually going to act as a windbreak for that little chicken coop area and keep them nice and protected in those major kind of rain storm hurricane wind events it's probably not going to completely protect them but it's going to help protect them so i'm up here in this little chicken pasture area and just kind of looking around and all through here you can see lots of green abundant growth this plant here, if anyone is here in the tropics and can identify this for me, I think I've identified it before and I just keep forgetting what it is, but it makes these nice pink little flowers and uh, the leaves have this little red stem on them. But I know the chickens love it. This is a chicken food and the chickens go crazy for it. Another chicken food here is this, which I believe is in the mint family of some somewhere in the mint family. Um, this grows just natively here. Some sort of yerba buena or something like that probably is my guess. Um, it also grows just natively here on the kind of pasture lands. Any land that gets enough moisture and enough sunlight where it's not in trees, it grows a lot. And of course we have abundant grass, abundant grass systems uh here in the tropics they just grow like crazy no matter what we do and uh, we use all this grass for mulch and compost and and chicken bedding or it just grows and we forget about it and have to go deal with it later so to be honest we just can't the the amount of growth that happens here we'd, we'd have to essentially be up here full time kind of managing all this kind of grassy area to really get it going but once we get the system established then it's much easier to maintain so once we get enough time and we decide that we want to make this area a priority of getting these chickens established, then all we're going to really have to do is kind of come up here, set up the fencing system, set up where the paddocks are going to be, and then just make sure we keep rotating them through. Once they actually start rotating through over and over again, it's going to be super simple to keep it going. So you can see where we all, we will be adding trees. This is actually a mango tree that's been up here for a while. Um, a little, it's kind of small, young mango tree, juvenile but still quite tall. So the plan will be essentially to add trees throughout the system, either support trees or fruit trees, so that above the chickens, they'll get a little bit of shade and also a nice little, uh, nice little protector of the rain and everything. So this main pasture down here, this will be one of them. That's kind of already set up. I set it up a while back and we used it for a little while and then we just, we just pen them out when we move the uh, half the chickens over into that chickshaw design. So this pasture here is one of the pastures. And then the plan will be to over here have another pasture. And uh, we'll actually end up probably dividing these two pastures into three or four. So three or four smaller little paddocks um, within this main big pasture here. And that's because we don't ever want the, the ground cover, all the plants growing to get completely decimated because it, in the tropics, you can lose stability so quickly. You can lose major, those major rain events, those major storms. If you have a little bit of too much soil disturbance, you can essentially be destroying your, uh, destroying your, your growth, destroying all the greens you got growing on your property. So uh, we gotta be really careful about that here and be very sensitive, especially in those storm, storm times. So we wanna make sure that our chicken systems aren't gonna end up causing damage to the land. 
So in order to do that, we're going to have small systems where we can rotate them through uh, on a regular basis. So maybe you rotate them through every, put them in there, leave them in there for three days to a week, depending on how much they're eating, move them on to the next one, and make it so that we can end up rotating them through uh, where they hit each one and each one has enough time to recover before we bring them back. So I would like to try to see like three weeks to a month here to for kind of a full recovery. But if we're getting a lot of rain, a lot of sun, things grow back really, really quickly. Because again, we are in the tropics. So it's kind of a, there's, there's both sides of the coin there. Things grow really quickly and abundantly, but you can also lose things really quickly. So you just kind of kind of play that, play the system and figure out uh, what exactly, what the goals are, what you're trying to do at that site. And then just make sure you're, uh, you're taking care of taking care of the land while you're managing your chicken systems. And that's what we're trying to do here. I didn't actually show you this in very much detail because this mama was a little protective of her eggs, but we just have like a little nest box in here. Uh, this is just our little area where they have nice coverage. They have a water here. Let's check the water. Yeah, I can refill that later. And their foods, another different type of watering system just so there's a little bit of variety. And with all the rain here, there's little puddles and I always find that they end up drinking from the puddles on the ground uh, before they go to their water. That's just how they like to do it. That's like their native or natural behavior anyway. All right, so that's it for this chicken system up here. This is one that's definitely still under development and um, we, actually, we actually just moved them back into this area probably two or three months ago, maybe a little longer than that. Maybe it was more like four or five. Everything's kind of blending together these days. But we moved them back here and we'd actually moved them away to bring all of the chicks into our mobile coop for a while to give this land a break. So that's a really important thing to do if you do have a kind of permanent chicken home and you have the potential of having a separate coop that's a little bit mobile or movable. I would recommend giving your main area a rest every once in a while so just it can recover. It can start to shoot some new growth and uh, the land can just have some time to not be disturbed. It's, it definitely will thank you for it. While we're walking down, we'll see we, we got a whole bunch of pineapples on this slope here. These were planted, I believe, by their grandfather. They're all sorry. I don't know if any of you all have seen a pineapple on an actual pineapple plant, but that's a pineapple plant. It flowers right up in the center there, and then it produces this little baby pineapple. And then that thing will take another four to six months to mature. So long term, but you get a pineapple every year. So it's a kind of a perennial system until it runs out of energy and gets too old. It'll just keep producing a pineapple a year for you, which seems like maybe not so much, but it is definitely a lot. I'll show you down here too. So they let them out here when we don't have them rotating through pasture. We'll actually just let them out to free range because we have a lot of, they have a lot of land up here. Um, they have about six acres of this little rainforest environment up here that they can basically free range in. So they'll try to let them free range as much as they can. But we still need to set up a system where they don't actually get into the living area so much because that, that has been a problem in the past where they, they get a little too close to the living area and uh, they start, start manuring all over the pathways and the pathways right outside the house. And that's not so not so welcomed by the family here. This little grove of pineapples, very old grove. It's doing really well. It still produces every year. Look at that pineapple right there. Thing looks beautiful. It's, it's pretty big already. And there's a bunch of them in here. So they just cleared this up, I think probably this weekend. Cause last time I was here it was not this kind of cleaned up. And just because of all the growth here, they had to clean these pineapples up probably every during this production time, when they're actually growing, we probably have to clean them, you know, once every month or two, just because of all this kind of abundant growth. You can kind of see it actually growing up into the into the bottom there. Now we don't mind if there's a little bit of growth there, but when it's about to get to this producing stage where we might think about harvesting, we try to do a more of a kind of hefty hefty chop of all those extra weeds, um, or extra growth there. So again, it's not really any, no thing is a weed. It's just plants that you don't want in that place. So we're just trying to clear them out a little bit so they get a little bit more sunlight, so they're a little bit happier and they'll produce. But right up here on this ridge, right below, right where it drains nicely, these pineapples thrive. 
Then they get that nice early morning sun there, and then they're a little bit protected the rest of the day. Clearly a good spot for them. We got a uh, banana rack that's just about to be ready. The chickens actually love it right underneath this, but these bananas here. So when we let them free range, they end up usually coming down here beneath the bananas and and scratching through because it's it's usually nicely uh, not super disturbed. Uh, there's not super gross soil and so they can scratch nice and easily and that's what they love. They love to scratch through here and find all the little critters. So these mamas are happy and the one rooster up here is very happy because he actually gets a posse to make his own. So let's go check out the other rooster system. We got a rooster system, the other chicken system. It's a more mobile system and uh, I'll meet you over there. All right, we're here at the other chicken system, our little mini Chickshaw Mini Me, inspired by Justin Rhodes with the addition of a pitched roof to give us a little extra protection from the elements here. But this is a small little flock. These guys are just now producing eggs. So they're still pretty young. They're adolescents still. And we're actually using them here to prep this area to turn into part of the, the home garden uh, growing system and this is kind of towards the bottom of that slope so this area will be for more longer term crops uh, that they would want to grow for their home garden for their own uh, for their own production so this area we're actually using the chickens to prep for us so instead of instead of managing it so that they protect the land we're actually managing it so that they destroy the land so we're adding lots of deep deep uh, bedding and organic material with the hopes that they'll scratch through there and basically take all the material, the growth out of here so that we can then rip it up, make the beds, establish the beds, and then seed them and get them going. This is actually the second time we've had chickens in here. We had them in here uh, last September or so, and they started and we actually did a little bit of bed prep and then seeded to a cover crop. And then things just, you know, things got busy. We and it didn't end up getting around to managing that cover crop at the right time. So it just kind of turned into overgrowth. And so we just let it turn into overgrowth. And then when we finally had time to come back and continue working on the system, we brought in the chickens and now they're gonna start prepping it again for us. So we actually use this mobile coop to be an engine of uh, fertility. I just. I just basically move this there. Feed got wet in there and got stuck. So I just twist it and that lets it kind of come out the bottom and you can see they're nice and hungry. But we actually use their coop here to prep this area and add manure. This coop is designed, I don't know if I can just get you in here enough so you can actually see it. So it has an open bottom. So you can actually see right up through there and so when they roost at night and they hang out in there during the day and at night, all the manure drops right down to the ground here. So lots of manure into the ground. So we let this area, we let the chickshaw sit here for, you know, a week or two, depending on how much manure we want to add to the land. And then we'll just move it slightly so that it has a chance to, they'll end up manuring somewhere else. And then once we move it, they start scratching and we'll add more mulch on top of where that chicken coop was. And they'll start scratching all that in and it ends up building up the soil right where we want it to be built up, right in the actual garden bed area that we're about to establish. So this is a great system if you don't have necessarily the time or energy or, or you just wanna be able to work on other things while you're prepping an area for new garden beds. So the chickens are gonna do all that work for you by tilling in, by scratching, by, by eating all the seeds that are coming up, by eating all the growth that's here, scratching all the growth. They can take completely grass soil and make it completely bare within a few weeks, depending on how many chickens you have. So that's the goal here. So we're actually creating a design disturbance where we're actually disturbing the system enough so that we can then take control of it again. And we're using the chickens to do that. So using animal systems to create fertility within your garden beds. That's a really kind of cool thing about permaculture is instead of us having to do everything, we can actually use the animal systems to do a lot of that work for us. And it actually ends up usually being a benefit, especially in the tropics, because the chickens, uh, their manure is uh, naturally high in phosphorus, which tends to be lacking in tropical uh, topsoils. And their eggs, we can crush them up and return it to the soil. 
and they're going to eat some of that and use it just in their diets as their calcium source but it'll also kind of return into the soil and add calcium to the soil also tends to be lacking especially in our really heavy clay soil here so we get to do all these these things and really we're not doing much we're just letting the chickens do the work for us so we really like this system it works really well and uh, i'm going to move this chick shaw now so you can kind of see what i mean by moving it and putting it somewhere else and uh, hopefully it goes well let's see Just like that, we have a chicken coop that's moved. So that's the great thing about having a chicken coop on wheels. It's super easy to just move her a little bit, you know, a little bit of effort, but not too bad. You can see right down here, lots of manure on the ground. So we just moved over there a chicken coop about, I don't know, maybe three or, three or four feet. It's not much at all, but that's gonna essentially spread out that nutrient load from their manure slightly over and then right on top of where their their coop just was I'm gonna go get some uh, mulch we'll add it in there so that they have a nice fresh layer of organic material right on top that they can start turning in and that's essentially uh, the beginning of compost and if we just let it happen around the soil there then it's just gonna turn into the soil turn the soil into much more high quality soil so we thank the chickens for all the work they do because it makes our jobs much easier all right guys, that's it. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a tour of the chicken systems here at Hacienda Rosa uh, before I get to work on doing some building here, uh, helping them build a little uh, workshop outside, just uh, just on the hill here, actually. I think I can show you. You might be able to see it there. So there's posts that are sticking up there. So we're actually adding a little extension of a deck and a little roof so that we have an outdoor workspace to do all the carpentry, carpentry jobs and everything we're doing here on site. because. We got a lot going on the site. We need to make sure we can keep moving with those. So we need a little bit of a workspace so we're not constantly interfering the, uh, the home area with all the, the dust and, and noise of a kind of wood workshop. So I'm gonna get to work on that. Hope you all have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, please like and subscribe if you, if you do like the videos and you do like what I'm doing. It gives me a little bit of motivation to see those new subscribers and leave comments, leave questions. I love to answer those. I'm gonna show you this. This is Mama. Hey, Mama. Hi. Yeah. Got to interact with them a lot so they actually continue to get used to you. And of course, the rooster who's doing a great job at defending these mamas. This is the alpha rooster in this flock. I know I said I was about to go, but this is what happens. I get distracted by the animals. That's pretty much a, a constant in my life. Get distracted by the animals especially the roosters, make sure you keep handling them and keep socializing them if you're gonna keep them so they get used to you being the boss, right? Who's the boss here? I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys, for real now. Hope you enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe. Please leave comments, questions, all those things. Check out my website, theatopermaculture.com. And uh, until next time, have a great day. <laughs>